Here is how to properly use Corvus in BTD6. He is $1,000, so we'll need to get some defenses down first, but we'll want to rush him as fast as possible. This is pretty easy, as the second we get him down, he'll start smoking the rounds. His spirit has global range and solid popping power for the early game, making him one of the best early towers you can buy, especially if you're on a longer map. Now, placing Corvus is actually a big deal because it will greatly impact his performance. You see, even though his spirit has global range, he only has three ways of gaining mana, and they all need him to be close to balloons. Mana is how he casts spells, but we'll cover that in a bit. For now, just put Corvus in the front lines. This will let him haunt stronger balloons, which gives him more mana when they're popped. Early on, there is only one thing to use mana on, and that's the spell in the bottom left called Nourishment. This converts Corvus's current mana pool into experience, which is very handy as Corvus is tied with Churchill and Adora for the slowest leveler in the game. This is by far the most tedious part of playing Corvus, but it makes him much stronger. The nice thing is that you can focus Focus using almost all of his mana on nourishment in the early and mid game as his spirit and other defenses will be more than enough to defend. If you ever do find yourself in a pickle though, just use spear and aggression until all the balloons are gone. This is a great cheap combo that not only gives him lead popping power, but also works very well against large rushes with its arcs of lightning. At level 3, Corvus learns Soul Harvest, his first ability. When activated, Corvus swings a giant scythe, popping nearby balloons and turns them into mana. The more layers harvested, the more mana he gets. I like to use this right after casting nourishment as it will give me enough mana to cast some spells if needed. At level 7, Corvus learns his second ability, Spirit Walk. This lets him teleport anywhere on the map. This is nice if you need him to move for close range spells or to use Soul Harvest on certain balloons and is why we're able to put Corvus up front early on, as this lets us move him when desired. At level 10, Corvus learns his third and final ability, Dark Ritual. When activated, Corvus creates a large fiery ring around himself that deals damage to balloons and hard Corvus mana from them. This is best used while large rushes are near Corvus as it has 100 pierce and will easily fill his mana pool, but you can really use it whenever you need some mana. Also at level 10, Corvus learns a spell called Recovery. Casting this makes Corvus and the spirit meditate, pausing their attacks, but every one of his spells cools down twice as fast as normal. This is very handy for getting big spells off cooldown during easy rounds, but you guessed it, we'll be using it to cast nourishment more often. So what I like to do is wait until my mana pool is full, cast nourishment, Nourishment, use Soul Harvest to get more mana, then cast Recovery until Nourishment is off cooldown and repeat. For the best results, you'll want to do this constantly and get Corvus up to level 20, but here are some guidelines for an easier and more enjoyable time. If you're going for a Corvus solo, like setting the record for the cheapest chimps run ever, you need Corvus to be level 20 by around 95. If you have some other defenses and are just trying to win with a ton of money left over, having Corvus hit level 20 by around 98 works well. But if you're just trying to win and have a chill time with Corvus, Corvus, aim for him to hit level 15 by 98 for advanced and expert maps, and level 13 by this time on beginner and intermediate maps. Now for his spells, and there are some crazy combos that we can pull off. For the mid game, there are two cheap combos, and they are casting Spear and Aggression, or using Repel and Ember. Both of these are pretty easy on the mana pool, and can make a huge dent in balloon rushes. Now, let's say you're in rounds 80 plus, and you don't need to be spamming nourishment anymore, what spells should you use? Well, a classic is using Ember, Repel, Spear and Echo all at the same time. The double pushback of Repel will stall the balloons, making them stay in the flames of Ember much longer than normal, which is super helpful for dealing with the mobs and super ceramics. And if Repel is on cooldown, you can replace it with Frostbound. It does a similar thing, but costs 20 more mana. If Ember or Echo are on cooldown, you can use Spear, Aggression, and Storm. These are nice because they'll never be on cooldown, as all three of them are toggleable spells. Just be sure to use Soul Harvest or Dark Ritual to keep your mana up, as having all three of these on drains quite a bit of mana per second. That being said, the spirit will be pumping out the damage with all three of these spells active. Now let's say you use this combo and a ton of super ceramics are heading for the exit. You could cast Frostbound and hope that the freeze stalls them long enough for your defenses to pop them, but if they're too close to the exit, cast Trample and Repel. This not only deals damage as the spirit runs them over, but will also push the balloons back with the spirit, causing them to take more damage. The downside to using Trample is that you don't have the spirit until it finishes its charge to the map, and you usually only need it for a short part of the track. So, a fun trick you can do is cast Haste after the Trample passes the balloons you needed pop, and the spirit will speed run through the rest of the map, giving you your spirit back. At this point, the only scary things should be DDTs, ZOMGs, and the bad. Luckily, there's an easy counter to all of them. For DDTs and the bad, we will cast Ancestral Might and then Echo. 
This turns the spear into a close range attacker, but deals massive single target damage. Just set Corvus to strong and watch him basically solo the DDTs. If Corvus doesn't have camo detection, you'll need to cast Vision as well, but you should have something to help with camos. To get around his short range while this is active, we can cast Spirit Walk to move him with the bat. This does a surprising amount of damage and will leave you in a good spot to finish it off. Normally, you can pop the bat with a first strike and skip the insides, but if you manage to get Corvus to level 20, you can cast over Overload after Ancestral Might wears off, and the Echo Overload combo will pop the bad similar to a first strike. Now, all that's left for us to cover is how to deal with the ZOMGs on rounds like 94, 96, and 98. A nice trick for all these rounds is to set Corvus to strong so the spirit targets the ZOMGs, and then cast Overload right on top of them. If Corvus is level 20, this will take out the ZOMGs by itself. If he's a lower level, then you'll have to cast Echo and Overload to take them out. Just be sure to not pop everything with this combo, as we'll want to stall a BFB or two to let his spells come off cooldown. The nice thing about this is that Corvus can beat Chimps basically on his own if you get him to a high enough level. For example, I beat off the coast with $129,000 left, and that was after spending 11 grand to get him to level 20. So if we had used nourishment more, we would have had 140k left over. Some people love challenges like this where they end with a ton of money, like Chom Chom, and Corvus is perfect for that. But what I like to do with him is get certain tier 5 towers in a chimps game that I normally can't afford, like a Flying Fortress, Dark Knight, or Gigantosaurus. This way, I get to take advantage of how strong Corvus is without spending every waking second casting nourishment. Instead, I just get him to a decent level, let him carry me through the mid game, and then get a crazy tier 5 tower to beat the 90s. So even if you're like me and don't like microwing, Corvus can still be a very fun hero to use, but that is how to properly use Corvus in BTD6.